My name is Nico Kalfigopoulos and I work for PwC. Now at today's conference you issued a wake-up call for the industry on the NIS directive. Why does the maritime industry need to wake up to this? The maritime industry is one of the sectors that is and will be affected by the new legislation uh, for NIS. Uh, this has already been published and made into UK law um, and uh, organisations including maritime have a 12 to 18 month grace period that, uh, that they will have to essentially uh, adopt um, the legislation uh, and make sure that their uh, existing practices uh, and processes around cybersecurity uh, are enshrined in the outcomes that the NIS legislation uh, kind of mandates. Now, one of the major talking points was the extent to which charterers might be affected by the NIS directive. So, the NCSC and the Department for Transport, uh, which is the competent authority for the maritime sector, has published. Um, threshold information on which organizations would uh, fall under uh, the, the scope of the legislation. Uh, there is also an expectation that in November uh, of this year, 2018, uh, the Department of Transport will also release additional detailed information about the sector that will indicate whether uh, kind of complex organization structures or indeed charters would fall under the scope of the NIS and if so, to what degree. You're obviously dealing with a lot of companies on a daily basis. Given the multiple challenges out there, NIS, GDPR, and so on and so forth, to your mind, where should the cybersecurity function sit within a shipping organization? That's a very good question. And uh, typically, uh, cybersecurity tended to be siloed um, and usually uh, sits within IT. Uh, that's not something that we see as the most effective form of managing cyber risk. Uh, and indeed, based on the focus of the NIS directive, uh, not being just about cybersecurity, but about operational resilience as well, uh, I think it would be beneficial for organizations to consider moving cybersecurity responsibility uh, a level up, but also in liaison and in touch with uh, other parts of the business, whether that's uh, operational parts, compliance, legal, um, and essentially to have a link also to the board in order to be able to properly represent and report on, on cyber risk. Now we're here in the heart of London, so inevitably the question arises, does the NIS directive apply to a UK-based oil company's out assets outside the EU? That's a difficult question which I can't necessarily answer at this moment in time with the information that has been made public. Um, I would say that uh, an organization based in the UK would be expected to treat its assets, whether uh, they are based geographically within the UK or outside, uh, within the same kind of scope, uh, remit and, 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 and cover. Um, so I would expect organizations to have a process for their assets and controls and outcomes that affect cybersecurity in the same way. I don't think it would make sense for organizations to duplicate that effort uh, just to treat uh, assets um, elsewhere differently. And now GDPR is here, do you think that this directive will gain greater visibility? Because after all, the sanctions are pretty much the same for both. Um, that's very interesting actually, and I think that the uh, press coverage um, and the amount of noise that GDPR has made uh, may indeed help NIS to um, overcome the initial, um, if you will, huddle of uh, accepting that legislation is coming, it's here, and there is responsibility for organizations to take ownership of that legislation. So that discussion, I think, most probably has already taken place because of GDPR. So I think that because the NIS uh, directive is, is, a similar, uh, is on a similar journey, it should make it easier for organizations to uh, assimilate um, and factor in uh, their their day-to-day -day business and, and objectives and become compliant in the coming months and years. And finally, this is your first European Maritime Cyber Risk Management Summit. How have you found the day? The day has been very, very interesting uh, so far. The speakers that I have uh, heard and listened to have provided useful insight on their um, respective fields of expertise. I think it's a fantastic um, uh, conference uh, with uh, a vast selection of, of, of professionals from different companies and different parts of, of maritime, which I think is very useful to uh, generate discussion because cybersecurity is 
something that is relatively new as a concept um, and as a capability in maritime. Um, so I think it's very good that uh, different people from different uh, backgrounds and, and mindsets come together to, to discuss this very, very important uh, topic. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.